Right, let's move on to cameras and movies. So this is an easy video tutorial and it covers the creation, editing and saving of cameras. Right, in the background I've got movies who run in right here in its kind of default state with an empty white set. Now before we get to talk about cameras, let's create some objects that we can use to demonstrate this. I'm going to put a police barrier in. I'm also going to, we may as well make it the full police set and put in a police car too. And right away in the distance, let's put the police box. I'm going to make the police box a little bit brighter, just because I know that I need it brighter for this. That's a bad example. Give me a tree. That's better. I'm going to put this away at the back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this camera right here and make it point down the line. Okay. Right, cameras. Movies who always has to have a camera present and when you start it you'll see that there's one there called camera one. Stands to reason if you go to create camera, you get camera two. The other thing to notice is that movies who always starts with this camera windows present. If it doesn't, you might have to go to view or show cameras window. Cameras can sometimes get in the way. They appear as big clunky objects, but in actual fact, when you make your final movie, they're never present uh, in the final render. If you do want to hide them, if they're getting in the way, again, you can go to hide cameras. Notice how this one didn't disappear. That's because it's selected. As soon as you deselect it, it will disappear. Let's show the cameras again. Each camera has its own little window right here. This is what camera 1 can see, and this is what camera 2 can see. And each of these windows I can make bigger by clicking on them. If I right click, it takes me to the camera that's providing that point of view. Right click this one, it will look at that one too. Alright, let's whiz round and get our point of view back. Cameras have got pink light on them. The two cameras in scene, you can see this one is illuminated and this one is dark. When it comes to directing and making animations, this is the camera that's recording and this one's inactive. It doesn't matter which one's selected. You can see that we've got this one selected and yet it's the other camera that stays lit up. This is just like the red light that you get in any sort of camcorder or mobile phone or broadcast equipment. It lets you know which one's actually recording. Cameras once created can be moved and rotated just like any other object with the left mouse button you can move it around with the right mouse button you can wiggle it about and with the two buttons together you can raise and lower it. But the cool thing happens when you come to consider camera options. So let's pick camera 1 here actually, we'll make this window a little bigger and we'll right click to bring up its options. So the first option you get, and we'll just run through these, is field of view. As I adjust these settings, watch what happens to the viewport down here. Field of view takes you from kind of fisheye lens all the way down to a sort of telephoto lens that you would see someone in the paparazzi using. You can see a lot in your scene or you can see hardly anything. Now that's not the same as zooming. Okay, The camera isn't zooming at this point, it's just changing its field of view. I'm going to go quite close and I'm going to just rotate and line up this thing because I want to show you something else now. The next option we come to is focus and it's called blur effect. You can either have this as none, or you can have focus, distance and depth of field. This makes this camera behave like a real world camera. In other words, you can control its focus. Now take a look in this window right here, you can see that the camera's not focused much on anything. I can adjust its point of focus, I can make it go all the way back to the tree. See how the tree becomes sharp? Or I can pull it towards the police barrier at the front. I can also change its depth of field. Let's put it on the car. In fact, you know what I'll do? I'll pull this barrier even closer just to make the effect more obvious. I'll set the focus distance so that the car's nice and sharp and the tree and the barrier are blurred. I can then control its depth of field. Now that's a bit of photography jargon to say um, how far away from the police car should things remain out of focus. So with a really small depth of field that means that our focal point is really quite tight. 
so only a small distance from the police car will be in focus and in actual fact it's so tight I can't even find it again if we increase this depth of field that means that not only is the police car in focus but so is the, the barrier and the tree let's switch that back off colours the next one we can choose a base effect these are quite cool we can make things black and white we can make it kind of sepia toned and in fact we can change the colour of the wash as it goes over colour tint that's slightly different again you can do the intensity of that make something negative blah 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 flip it horizontally or flip it vertically switch that all off the best thing to do is just experiment with some of these things overlays next overlay effect we can make it look like it's old film uh, we can put an image overlay and movies or ships with sorts of binoculars and sniper scopes and all that kind of stuff as an underwater effect it's quite subtle but we've got kind of shimmering going on again you'll see that we've got intensity sliders for all of this thing all of these things CCTV pixelate it that's quite cool I quite like using that sometimes and camera shake or earthquake cam as you sometimes call it let's switch all of that off and finally under adjustments we've got final effect contrast color and brightness so more jargon brightness controls the tendency of the scene to either white or black color is as you'd expect from black and white all the way through to sharp color and contrast how do you explain contrast well if you turn the contrast up it makes the whites whiter and the blacks blacker and if you pull it down everything tends towards a kind of middle grey sometimes you want to bump the brightness up and the contrast up with any of these arrangements you can save it as a favourite um, so if you've got a favourite type of camera with a specific focal point and effect on it you can save it through here and call it up later on now cameras are obviously important when you come to shoot your animated movie and movie zoo but they can do some cool things in the meantime and one of these we've covered in the uh, in the backdrops tutorial it's worth going over again in case you haven't seen that let's create a backdrop right here actually what we can also do since we've done the backdrop example let's pick a character character and an object I'm going to search for the TV because that's quite a good example Certain objects and movies and certain characters allow you to put textures on things and these are two such examples. The character and his decals tab, custom texture, we can pick cameras and put on them the sort of project what the camera can see. It doesn't make a lot of sense just now. But if I come closer and start to move this camera around, you should be able to see that the texture on the guy kind of updates and you can get some nice cool effects with that. Probably more sensible would be to take the TV and again in its screen image go to cameras and you can make it look like the thing that you're shooting is appearing on the television. I'm not going to give you a full list of objects in movies though that can, uh, that can support this sort of thing but there are dozens and it's worth just getting in and playing around with them. One last thing to say is that MovieZoo at present has a maximum of four cameras and this is because cameras are expensive to compute and if we gave you any more than four um, your scene would very quickly come to a halt. So right now we've got four cameras and we're working on ways to get that number up.